interesting that you participated. Um, I'm seeing two, three familiar faces. Oh, four familiar. No, all of you are familiar. You've been here before. Welcome back. Um, again, just my email address there. If you want to ask me questions afterwards about the, the work, there it is, melissapinar.atg at gmail.com if you have any questions um, about this work. Again, welcome. And uh, today we are going to learn a few things about parts of speech um, in Afrikaans den woordsoorte. Um, please uh, stop me if you feel that I'm a bit too fast. This is my favorite part of Afrikaans um, is to study the, the components of the words in Afrikaans. So um, I talk quite quickly but um, please just tell me ma'am you are too quick for me or you too going too fast slow down and I'll do that for you. Um, all right, guys. Um, so parts of speech, of course, in Afrikaans woordsoorte. I'm going to um, switch over to Afrikaans now. So woordsoorte um, is gedeeltes van woorde. Nee, as ek a boek voor my het, if I have a book in front of me um, and I open a page, I'm supposed to be able to identify to identify all the words there as different types of words. So that is why we must know parts of speech in Afrikaans den woordsoorte. The first one we're focusing on is selfstandige naamwoorde, which is in English nouns, and bijvoeglijke naamwoorde, which is in English adjectives. Let's go on. Hoekom is dit vir my en vir jou belangrik om te weet wat is verskillende woordsoorte? En die eerste antwoord daar is, dit help vir ons met spelling en met skryf. Het is verschrikkelijk belangrijk dat ons weet hoe kom woordjes of hoe woordjes bij elkaar pas. For instance, as I said, if I've got a page, I must know what is a noun and what is a verb. I must be able to group the words. Later on, if we go deeper, you'll see why I say this helps with the spelling. And with writing. Okay, so the second... Um, Second one there, that help on some woorden te rangskik. It help us to group words, words, and then also it makes us clever with language. Now, and that is actually the most important thing. We want to be clever, and we are clever. And if we know how the different um, parts of speech works and, and how, it, how words are grouped, then we are very clever. Now, okay, so the first one is then, of course, selfstandige naamwoorde which is also known in English as nouns. Please remember you are allowed to take photos of your of the PowerPoint. And as I've mentioned yesterday, if we've done with this, uh, if we're done with this entire slideshow, then I will be able to email it to you guys. So um, please know that um, at the end of the slide, so show we are, you are more than welcome to just privately email me or um, chat in the chat box, give me your email address and I will, mail it to you then. So, selfstandige naamwoorde refers to um, woorde wat mense, dieren, plekke of dinge name gee. In other words, a noun is something that gives meaning or name to mense, people, dieren, animals, plekke, places or things. Nee. So, the next one there, says, jy kan gewoonlik aan selfstandige naamwoorde vat, which is true, you can usually touch um, that that is uh, been identified as a noun, but you cannot touch abstracte selfstandige naamwoorde, which is known as abstract um, nouns, soos liefde. You can see how somebody loves one another, ne? or how somebody might not like something, but, sorry there, but um, you you cannot touch it. So abstract nouns you cannot touch. Selfstandige naamwoorde het gewoonlik a meervoud in verklinging in geslag. Um, so for instance, um, it's got a plural, it's got a diminutive, and it's got a geslag. But selfstandige naamwoorde hoef nie aan al die kriteria te voldoen nie. In other words, if you see a, a um, selfstandige naamwoorde, it's not supposed to um, be able to have a meervoud verklang en a geslag, but it may have some of those aspects. And an example here is a man. Man is a soort naam, nee? it's a man, it's type of things. Koos is a eie naam, it's a proper naam. 
liefde en haat is een abstracte zelfstandige naam word, in other words, een abstract naam. Een skoolvisse is een versamel naam, en um, silver is een stof naam, um, en bekerwater is een maat naam. And we'll get to each of them later on. It's very important that you can identify the five types of selfstandige naam worde. The first one is of course eie name, second soort name, versamel name, massa name, in abstracte selfstandige naam worde. Now I've given you the English one, um, a name for, for each of those five um, types of nouns as you go along, you'll see now. So eie name is the first one we're going to start with. And look at the pictures that I've put in for you guys. Um, it's there to make it easier for you to understand. So eie name, also known as proper nouns. And the picture there is a guy that says, John, I am John. Now, John is a proper noun because it's the name of somebody. So proper nouns, again, it is the name, the name van a person of a geografische verschijnsel. Um, so, a plek, a brug, a pas, a straat. Eie name begin altyd met a hoofletter, capital letters. So, a naam van a person of a, of a, of a, of a place always starts with a capital letter, even if it stands in the middle of a sentence. And my examples here, you'll see here, I've written here, table, ooh, sorry. <clears throat> I've written here, table mountain, which is a place, and you see there it's capital letters. Susan or Susan is a um, name, so it's in a capital letter. And my example here for you, I'm going to read it and then I'll explain what it's about. Jan is in law school in Foleni Park in Van der Bijl Park. Leaders van law school in Foleni. Noem hulle self die Emmys. Jan trek elke maandag sy sportkleere aan. Hy gaan in juni een skaaktoernooi in Kaapstad bywoon. Guys, Jan is the name of somebody. That is why it is called a, a proper noun. Laarsko en Foleni Park in Van der Bijl Park. Um, and then also the word Cape Town there is names of places. Laarskool in Foleni Park is a primary school in the town of Van der Bel Park. And children from Laarskool in Foleni Park call themselves the Emmys. This guy, Jan, wears his sport clothes every Monday. And in June, he will be going to a chess, uh, chess um, match. He will be playing chess in Cape Town. So that's what the sentence is about. I have highlighted all the proper nouns for you in the sentence. And you'll see that everything is written in capital letters. Do you see there? So proper noun, names of places and people, proper um, capital letters. The next one that we are going to do is soort name, common nouns. This is a very easy one to remember. It's all the things, your pen, your book, your table, your chair. And I've put in, in a, pre, a, a picture here of a chair. There's a prenki van a stool, and most of you might know the artist Picasso, and um, that is a painting of Picasso that he's done in a chair. Okay, so that is uh, things that I can see and touch. Common nouns, in other words. A common noun <coughs> is a soort naam, and it verwijs gewoonlik na dit, wat ons kan sien aan raak, bijvoorbeeld a tafel of a stoel. It's also the most common, the algemeenste selfstandige naam word. And you can test it, you can toets it, door te kyk of die woord a meervoud, a verkleining, um, kan wees, of dier a lidwoord, a article voor die woord te sit. Now I'm going to explain this step by step. You can test whether something is a common noun <clears throat> by testing whether it has a plural, can be a plural, or a diminutive, or if you can put an article in front of the word. Now, an article, there's only two in Afrikaans. It's called lidwoorde. You only get two in Afrikaans. The word die and the word a. Uh. You'll see the a. Uh. Those are the only two articles in Afrikaans. And it always stands in front of a selfstandige naam word. Look there, die tafels. It can also be a tafel. So let's look at the example. Jevrou vraag vir die klas om die stoele op die tafels te pak, so die skoonmaker die vloer kan vee met die besen. I have highlighted for you all the common nouns that you can see there. Jevrou, I can see her. 
class, I can see the class and I can touch the class. Stule in tafels, tables and chairs, I can see it, I can touch it. Squin marker is of course uh, the cleaner, I can see the cleaner. Floor and besom, I can see the, the floor and the broom, I can touch it and therefore it is a common noun. And I've given you a few pictures here of common nouns, tables, um, chair, uh, <laughs> tables and chairs and rooms and a person. It can also be one chair, two chairs, yen stool, two stule, yen taf of a tafel, tafel key is the diminutive, a broom, one broom, two brooms, um, a little broom, a klein a BSMP, I hope you understand what I've said. Okay, one of my favorites in Afrikaans um, nouns is a fashamal noun, in other words, a collective noun. Now, this is um, to indicate masses of things. Oopsie, sorry. It's to indicate masses of things. For instance, if I have a, a, a whole bunch of lions there, you can see the pictures of the lions there. If I've got a whole bunch of lions or a whole swarm of bees, then that is called a collective or in Afrikaans a verschamel naam. So, dit word gebruik om massas te meet. And an example is, die swermbeie het die troplius aangeval. A swarm of bees, of bees, sorry, attacked a, a a bunch of lions. I'm not sure what you call it in English. Okay, so a swarm bear is a collective noun which refers to a whole bunch of bees, and a troop loose is um, a collective noun or verschamel noun for a clump loose by a car. And that is then a verschamel noun or a collective noun. Up until now, do you all understand what we've done? We've done proper nouns, we've done common nouns, and we have now done for Shamal Nama. Can I have an indication of all of you are fine? Please just type there, yes, ma'am, or go back, ma'am. Great, thank you. I see there's, a, there's some reaction. Great, guys. Thank you for participating. Okay, then I'm going to go on to the next slide. I have given you a few for Shamal Nama here, a few collective nouns, but guys, you must really concentrate now with what I'm going to say. There is hundreds of types of Shamal Nama or collective nouns in Afrikaans. I've only given you a few here. The first one, of course, being a bender roosh. That is a, a, a group or a bunch of um, robbers. A bundle gedichte. I don't know how you call it in English, but in Afrikaans it is a bundle gedichte. It refers to a little book of poems or a book of poems. A school fisher, a school of fish, swarm bayer or fools, a swarm of bees or, or birds, a trop in de ganse of lews, a floatskeeper. Now quickly focus here. Um, a bundle gedichte. And a fluid skipper is usually, uh, people get those wrong. I think in English it would be a fleet of, sh uh, of, um, of ships, I'm not sure. Then a verpsel hoinkies refers to baby dogs, a whole bunch of them. And then a bundle wasgoed, um, laundry, a bundle of laundry. So those are just a few of the fashamal name in Afrikaans. And I'm not... Um, lying when I say there's quite a lot in Afrikaans. I don't know if you maybe want to take a picture of this quickly. I'm going to give you two seconds. All right, then we go on. The next one is Masanama or mass nouns. This refers to, um, sorry for moving this around so quickly, but I'm trying to multitask here. If you see that heap of sand there, there's lots and lots of um, korrelkies of sand, as I would say in Afrikaans. That's by a korrelkie sand. On sal dit nie amal kan tel nie. We won't be able to count each little piece of sand there. And therefore, we use mass nouns. Now that refers to stove, metale, gasse en vloeistove. In other words, everything that can't be counted. So for the example here, tonne limoensap word jaarliks in die fabriek vervaardigd. Tons of orange juice are being made in the um, fabric each year or manufactured each year. In other words, tons of lemon sap, tonne orange juice, won't be able to be counted. And therefore, we use mass nouns. Right, the next one. 
one of my favorites as well, abstracte zelfstandige naamwoorde or abstract nouns. This refers to things that I cannot touch, but most I can see. It is something that they say, it gaan gepaard met gevoelens, your feelings, and abstract concepts um, in two stande. And in other words, guys, it is mostly emotional stuff. Hy het haar gevra om te trouw by a groot samenkomst, omdat hy lief is vaar. That samenkomst is actually a mess noun, guys, because it can't be counted. Um, maar lief, liefde is die abstracte selfsande genaam word. Because love and hate and all the other emotions can't be counted. And therefore it is called an abstract selfstandig genaam word. Okay, before I go on to the activity, do you all understand the five types of nouns that I get? Yes, ma'am. Great, thank you. Anyone else? If I can yes, get at least. Great, great. Yeah, it's so nice to hear the voices. I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you, my dear. Okay, so then we are going on to the activity. Guys, I cannot make the font a bit um, larger here. I struggled to do it in the previous um, session. So please bear with me. Um, I want you to identify all the self-standige naamwoorde in die volgende sinne. Die man eet de appel in the chat box. What is the self-standige naamwoorde in that sentence? Identify the nouns in that sentence. Die man eet de appel. Think of that that you can see and touch. I see two. What, what do you think? Man and apple. Man and apple. And who was this? iPhone. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay, great. I remember that voice. Okay, so man and apple. That is then the stuff I can see and touch. That is my self-standige naamwoorde. The next one. Peter gaan die vakantie Kaapstad toe. Peter is going on holiday to Cape Town this, hol well, this holiday. So there you go. I see three. I see three. Peter gaan die vakantie Kaapstad toe. What do I see there? Mijn Peter vakantie in Kaapstad. Daar sy, jylle is te slim hoor. Peter vakantie Kaapstad. And to tell me, um, Peter and Kaapstad, what types of nouns is that? What type of noun? It's the same noun. Think quickly. I've got proper nouns. I've got collective. I've got um, all the other types of nouns. I can't remember them all now. <laughs> I'm still sleepy. <laughs> what type of noun is that? Remember what I said? It's got capital letters. So what type of noun is that? Peter and Kopstad. You can even give me it in English and I'll give you the Afrikaans. It's a proper noun. Thank you, Min. So a proper noun, in other words, is a eienam. A eienam. And vakansie, what would that be? Let's see if you can give me the answer there. It is an Afrikaans, a soort naam. What would that be in English? A soort naam. It is in English then a common noun. Okay, ons het de sak wortels gekoop. I see two, and only two, and it's the very same type of noun. So let's see. I want you to identify the nouns and tell me what type of noun it is. Ons het de sak wortels gekoop. We bought a bag of carrots. What can I see? What can I touch? I'm sunk in wortels, ma'am. It's a common noun. Yes. Is this also iPhone? I yes, remember that. Yes. Oh, you're so clever, eh? <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you for participating, iPhone. Okay. On to the sack wortels equip, and it's sack and wortels, and then, of course, it is a common noun. Nee. The next one. Sy gevoel vir haar is onbeskryflik. His feelings for her is undescribable. I see only one. And what type of noun would that be? Sy gevoel vir haar is onbeskryflik. 
anyone you can, okay um I see you, Angelina. You actually also typed something in the previous one. And mean, thank you, guys. Let's see, sy gevoel vir haar is onbeskryflik. I see one. I'm going to give you a hint. It's an abstract noun. So now you don't have to identify it. I'm gevoel. Gevoel, it's an abstract noun. Thank you so much. So gevoel. It's an emotion, and therefore it is an abstract noun. Sy het haar sonbril opgesit to die son in haar oorskyn. A direct translation would be, she put her sunglasses on when the sun shone in her eyes. Okay, I see three. What nouns is that? Oh, well, identify the nouns in the sentence, please. Sy het haar sonbril opgesit to die son in haar oorskyn. Angelina, what do you think? <clears throat> Let me hear. And Sufisu. And Sonbril and common noun. Okay, thank you so much. Sonbril is a common noun. Yes, and I see another two. Yes, Angelina, it is Sonbril. And I see another two. Thank you, um, iPhone and so, um, Angelina, for helping there. I see another two. You guys, think of what you can see and touch. There is one that I can touch, but I would never want to touch it because then my hand will never be the same again. So, yes, I mean, you, you, you don't want to touch the sun. Nee. And then the last one. In order for me to touch the sun, I must first see the sun. And I can see that with my what? I see the word there. Ua, thank you, Min. <laughs> okay. So, it has a opgesit. Um, and um, 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 die sonne naar oor geskyn het, and there you go, thank you, me and Angelina, and iPhone for participating, and it is then sonbril, son, and oor. This one, has got an interesting one in, die school facet vir by die haai geswem. Guys, I see something here. I see two of them, and, and but the one has two words. I see two types of nouns. The one is, I'm not going to say. You must say to me. Okay, so mean, we refer to in this, in this instance, it will be a school fisher. And what type of noun is school fisher? Um, either a proper or a common. No, it's not a proper or a common. It is a versamel noun. And in English, it is a collective noun. But thank you for trying, my dear. And then there's another noun in there. Also something I wouldn't want to touch because then you won't have a hand anymore. Think of it. The school fish had for by the high swim. The school of fish swam um, for by the, the shark. That's what I mean. I wouldn't want to touch a high either. No, no more hand for you. Okay, so there it is, a school fisher and a high. Okay, before we go on, this was the inselfstandige naamwoorde. I want to know. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Can I go on to byvoeglike naamwoorde? Do you all understand now? If I ask you what is a selfstandige naamwoorde, would you be able to say something I can see and touch? But, uh, but not yes, an right. abstract. Okay, great. Can I go on? Thank you, Mean and iPhone and who else? Junior, Jonathan, let me hear from you guys. Great, Angelina. I want to know, can I go on? Okay. Remember, guys, again, <laughs> thank you guys for typing yes. Um, just a moment. <coughs> Please remember that um, at the end of this entire slideshow, I can really email it to you if you struggle. And take photos, take lots of snappies of the screen. Okay, the next one, a byvoeglike naamwoord. Och, and this is an English, then an adjective. And this is such a nice um, word. And I want you all to close your eyes now. Close your eyes, close your eyes. I can see whether you haven't closed your eyes. Okay, in front of your, uh, in your brain now, see a box, and it's a gift box. See this gift box in front of you. And now I'm going to ask you, is it big or is it small? Is it colorful? Is it dull? Does it have a ribbon? A red one or a blue one? A shiny one? How does that gift box look? 
That's your gift box in your mind now, ne? Okay, so listen carefully what I'm saying now. The box, the gift is a noun because I can see it and I can touch it. But all the words that I use to describe that gift box, dull, pretty, large, big, small, that is my byfuglike noun word. That is an adjective. And that is what we are going to do now. We're going to look at all the descriptive words. Think of a fairy tale. It's not just Cinderella's dress. It's a big dress. It's a blue dress. It's a beautiful dress. Nee. So it's almost like a fairy tale. You're going to use words to describe the selfstandige noun word. And that is then byfuglike noun word. And I want you all to look at what I'm saying here. Put your thinking cap on again. There is that man, and on his head he's got a light bulb. In Afrikaans, hy het a gloeilamp. And that gloeilamp is something I can see and touch, which means it is a noun. But describe the gloeilamp to me. It is yellow, it is bright, it is shining, and yellow and bright and shining is then by voeglike naamwoorde, because it describes the noun. And look here, I've said it for you here. It word gebruik om een selfstandige naamwoord te beskryf. So a byvoeglike naamwoord beskryf die selfstandige naamwoord. An adjective describes the noun. Dit word ook gebruik by trappe van vergelijking. So we also use byvoeglike naamwoorde with degrees of comparison. And it's being used with intensive forma, which is such a beautiful way of speaking Afrikaans. Intensive forms, I think, in English. But we'll get there. Now, I'm going to give you a few sentences. And these sentences have byfoeglike naamwoorde in. And from this one, actually, I want to go back. Take pictures. Take pictures of that slide. I'm going to count all three. One two, three, done. Let's go on. <laughs> this one you also must take a picture on. Put your thinking cap on, put a smile on your face because you are going to understand this. The first sentence there. Die man eet a groot appel. Identify the nouns quickly. It's man and appel because I can see the man and I can see the appel and I can touch it. But what describes the man? Nothing describes the man, eh? But something describes the other noun in the sentence, and that is groot. In other words, the apple is groot. So groot is my byvoeglike naamwoord, of my adjective, want hy beskryf die apple. Groot beskryf die apple. Groot is my byvoeglike naamwoord. The next one. Die kamer is nou nekies. The room is tidy. Kamer is my noun, and what describes my noun? Dit is die byvoeglike naamwoord, of die adjective, nekies. Nekies beskryf die kamer. The next one. Die seen het vinnig om die atletiekbaan gehaard. The boy ran quickly around the, the track. Die seen in die atletiekbaan. That is my nouns. But um, I want to focus on the seen here. The seen is running fast, vinnig. In other words... Die byvoeglike naamwoord in die sin is vinnig, want hy beskryf die seense aksie. The adjective is vinnig because it describes the action of the boy. The next one is then, die tafelblad is grof. Okay, sorry Angelina and Junior, groot means big, something is very big. Okay, die tafelblad is grof. The top of the table is rough. Nee, grof beskryf die tafelblad. Grof is die byvoeglike naamwoord of die adjective. Die vrou eet a bak curry wat haar mond brand. The woman is eating a bowl of curry and it's burning her mouth. So mond and vrou and bak and curry is all nouns. But I want to ask you about the the mouth of the woman. What is describing the mouth of the woman? It's the word brand. Brand beskryf die vrou se mond. Are you all still with me? Is your thinking cap still on? Yes, ma'am. Great, 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 great. Okay, so I am going on to the next slide. I hope you've taken a snappy. Okay, so yeah. How do I identify by naamwoorde? The first thing is, 
trappe van vergelijking. If I've got a whole bunch of words and I have no idea which ones is bijvoeglijke naamwoorde, I can ask myself, can it be degrees of comparison? And yes, all bijvoeglijke naamwoorde can be degrees of comparison. Now focus here. When two or more things are being compared to the, uh, with each other, wanneer twee of meer dinge met mekaar vergelijk word, then we call it compare, then we, then we know it can be trappen van vergelijking. Die vergrootende trap word gebruik wanneer twee sake met mekaar vergelijk word. So, the comparative form is being used when two or more, no, not only not more, only two things are being compared with each other. So, for instance, Jan teken mooier as Sari. Jan can draw more pretty or beautiful than Sari. Look there, mooier, the ER indicates that it's the vergrootende trap or the comparative form as, as you may know it in English. Die oortreffende trap, the superlative form, word gebruik wanneer meer as twee sake met mekaar vergelijk word. So, the um, superlative form is when two or more things are being compared with each other. For instance, I'm always identifying it with the STE at the end of the word. Jan teken die mooiste in die hele klas. Jan can draw the most beautiful entire class. So, for the um, oortreffende trap is the superlative form I identified with ste. So, if a word um, can ha have um, degrees of comparison with the ER or the ste in Afrikaans, then you know it is a bijvoeglijke naamwoord. Then, focus here, lidwoorde. Now, remember I spoke about articles previously. I only get two articles, D and a. Ne? A, D. Those are the only two lidwoorde that I get in Afrikaans, the only two articles. And it is always used with the oortreffende trap, the um, superlative form. And look at the example that I'm giving you here. Or look at the example. Jan teken die mooiste. Do you see that D is the lid word and mooiste is the superlative form. Die bijvoeglijke naam word. Oh, this is something you must focus. If a adjective ends on an S in Afrikaans, then the S will double at the superlative form. Wanneer a word, a bijvoeglijke naam word op a S eindig, verdubbel die S in die oortreffende trap. Look there, the word fis, to be angry or annoyed. Nee, it ends on an S, the S will double when we use the superlative form. And by voeglijke naamwoorde wat op een E eindig. If I've got an adjective ending on an E, for instance, look there, opgewonde. Then I'm not going to use the comparative ER or the superlative STE. I'm going to say meer or mees if the word ends on an E. So, meer opgewonde and mees opgewonde. Please take a photo of that entire screen there. Remember, you can use your phone, you can use your computer. Okay, and let's go on. Now, this is such a creative way of talking about Afrikaans words. Look here. By voeglijke naamwoorde, by intensieve vorme. That is intensive forms. Um, in Afrikaans, I say this is a very creative way of speaking because it is. Nee, Afrikaans is a very descriptive language. So it's a very bijvoeglijke naamwoord language. Nee, it's, um, um, it's a language where we have lots of adjectives because um, we use intensive forme to emphasize or beclaim to in something. Now look here. Bijvoorbeeld potblauw, silverskoon. Brandmaar, do it zeker. Let me start at potblauw again. When something is very blue, we say it is potblauw. When something is very clean, we say it is silverskoon. When something is, if someone is very thin, we say, sure, that person is brandmaar. Do it zeker. When I'm very sure of something, I say, I am do it zeker. When something like the superhero, the flash is very fast, I say, the flash is blitzvinnig. Nee. Brood nodig. When I'm in need of something, I say it's, I'm, I'm, ek, ek nodig dit brood nodig. Nee. Mooi still. When something or someone is very quiet, I can say it's mooi still. 
Okay. Now, do you see how, how creative a person can speak? Now, now <clears throat> I'm very impressed with you guys. I think we're actually almost done with this entire slide because we are working quite quickly. Now, I don't know if some of you have the following book. Do some of you have this book, Afrikaans Handbook and Study Guide, an English student's guide to Afrikaans? Look, just look at that cool book. I like this book very much. But if you don't have it, don't worry. That is why I've put the screenshots in here. Now this, and by click and number, you'll find it on page 14 for those of you who have the book. And this is only to recap. Now I know that some of you might be rolling your eyes now because now teacher Melissa wants to go through each and every little thing there. And yes, I do, because I want you to understand it. So if you have this book, Open it on page 14, please. If not, just follow with me as I go through each and every little thing because I want you to get clever. All right. So if you don't have the book, don't worry. Just look at the screenshot with me. By fuglike naamwoorde, as you know now in English, it is an adjective. Now I'm going to go through each little thing here. Um, when a word, look there, glad. Glad is a adjective it's a byvoeglike naam but it means when something is very slippery now look there it's a short vowel a and the word ends on a short vowel and a consonant but it's the consonant you see that the consonant then of course when we make it a um uh when we have to want to fit it in a sentence and we're going to say the d doubles glad gladisieb genotvol short vowel consonant then the consonant's going to double the genotvolle dag. I hope you're all still with me. Can you see there? Twin vowels. Die man is vreed. Look there. It's a twin vowel and the word ends on a consonant. Then when I, uh, when I speak in an adjectival sentence, it's going to be the vreede man. You see there, the one e fell away, the one twin. Die vrou is spaarsam. The sparse from a fro. So the one twin ate the other twin, and that's why we only have one there left. Double consonants. The stool is hard. The harder stool. It ends with double consonants, then it gets an E. The harder stool. The cantus flux. When will I, of course, use sentences like this? Typically in a test, your teacher will say, um, fit the following um, adjective or by fuglike naam word in die sin. Then you must know, you can't talk about the, the hard stool, it's going to be the harder stool. You can't talk about the flux kind, you're going to say the flux kind. Do you understand why? We're changing the sentence so that the word, or we're changing the word so that it will fit into a sentence. If I've got a, a sentence or a word with a short vowel and an F consonant at the end, see short vowel, F, short vowel, F, or vowel S of F, vowel F, then that F is going to change. It's going to have an extreme makeover and it's going to become a W, a double W. You see there, the kamer is muf, it is the muffa kamer. He went for a makeover, that F, it turned into two W's. The vowel is grof, say grove vowel, do you see there, makeover. So whenever you've got a short vowel, um, at the end of the word, and the word ends on an F, that F will turn into two W's. Okay, the next one. Twin. Yebo, I hear somebody. Oh, ma'am. How, yes. how will you know, ma'am, if you have to change it into a W or a V? Um, so, whenever the word ends on an F, then you know it's only going to be W's. You see there. Is it, is it yes, my friend speaking? Okay, so whenever yes, the word ends on an F, then you know it's always going to change uh, to a um, double W. w. Okay. Yes, right, look here now. Now we've got a twin vowel. Remember, this one was a short vowel. Now we've got a twin vowel. You see they do have two O's, half two A's, ne? and the word ends on an um, F. So when I've got twin vowels and the words end on an F, then it's only going to become one W. Oopsie. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So look there. One of the, um, twin vowels ending on an F. Then that F is going to have an extreme makeover, but it's this time only going to be one um, W. 
So make a star there and make a star there because you cannot get confused with this two. Short vowel, twin vowel. Short vowel and an F have two and W's. Twin vowel and an F, it gets one W. Okay. Double consonant and an F, look there. They have got the word half. It ends on a double consonant. Do you see there? And when I am, and it ends on an F, ne? double consonant with the F lastly. Then that F is also going to change into a W, but I'm adding the E. The A is half, the egg is half. It's an half, it's half of an egg. It's half a year. The hand is skurf. The skurve hand. You see there, it's a W, E. Next one, short vowel ending on a G. So if I've got a short vowel, look there, the word sag has got a short vowel and it ends on a G. Lich, short vowel ends on a G. Then I'm only going to add a T, E. Die sachte kussen, die lichte sakkie. Long vowel with a G. Die berg is hoog. Do you see there? Long vowel and a G. Then it becomes a kap, a deel teken e, die hoog berg. But you'll see there, most of them's got, got a deel teken e, but not that one. That means it is a uitsondering in, in English. Okay, so look there. The stool is laag. It is a laag stool. So if a word ends on a G, it usually gets an um, E. Usually a deal take an E. The kind is moog ends on a G. The moog And guys, look at the spelling there. Remember, I use deal take an E's when um, I am dividing the word in syllables. So you can actually just put it in the brackets there for yourself. You can write the long vowel plus a G. Think of syllables, letter grepe, because that's usually when I'm going to use a deal taken ear. Remember, syllables there. Now, if I've got a long vowel word, and that long vowel uh, word ends with a D. So, for instance, the word, oh, I see there's only a few seconds left. Okay, guys, listen to me quickly. Very important. Tomorrow, we're going to start at the long vowel and then work through the rest of the page and then do an activity. When we are done with that, you, uh, you drop me all your emails and I'll, at the end of that lesson, I'll send you this PowerPoint. But then tomorrow, we're starting with part two as well of Wordswerte, which means you're going to get even more clever. Okay, so focus for me. Enjoy your day. Keep your mask on. Sanitize your hands. Keep safe. Yes, ma'am. And I'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy your day. Goodbye. Bye, ma'am. Bye-bye.